What's up, YouTube? Welcome to the Counting Wisdom Podcast. Um, you know, I just wanted to give a general podcast for today. Uh, probably just going to talk about what's on my mind uh, for... Uh, uh, obviously, it's going to be related to God and the Bible. Um, you know, I'll start off with the, just a bit of encouragement that, you know, we still have to keep pushing, you know, um, sometimes life can feel hard. It can feel, uh, like certain problems we can't overcome, um, you know, and certain problems I think can make us mad and angry and we feel, uh, you know, like life isn't worth living. And so, um, you know, one solution I think is one addressing the problem, um, whether that be with a relationship or with, uh, you know, depending on what it is, but also pray about everything. You know, that's what we have to do. That's what we're called to do is pray about everything. Um, you know, I'm reminded of how Jesus said, go and sin no more. And so that's what, you know, I think our goal should be when trying to improve our life. Um, you know, I don't think life is boils down to just, you know, uh, trying to improve our life all the time. But um, still, uh you know, we think about trying to improve our situation. And I think one of the big things is we should still journey to overcome sin. And I think that's a big issue that we uh, have to be faced with. One of the things I think God is teaching us is about love and, of course, righteousness as well. And you know, um, teaching us about himself. And so, um, when life gets hard, I think, and going back to, okay, what are my goals in life? You know, uh, Ecclesiastes is a great book. Uh, you know, Solomon was expressing some of the hard things that he was dealing with. And, you know, he, you know, gave us that, you know, basic, uh, advice of you know hey remember to fear god and keep his commandments you know this is what your main purpose is you know and our main kind of uh, objective if you will you know that's our goal and and so sometimes when we feel as if you know i should be doing more you know i should be a ceo of a company or i should have a million dollars in my bank account I think really coming back to, you know, the guidance of Jesus Christ, because I think a lot of times uh, we don't necessarily want to take Jesus's advice. You know, we want to uh, live life on our own terms and, uh, you know, we want to, you know, find out what we can do to uh have a bit a better life and a great life and uh sometimes we uh try to live for pleasure you know maybe it's sex or it's drinking or party that you know uh it, maybe it's money you know uh, just trying to make more money or maybe it's making money without having to work hard um, whatever it may be, um, I think that we uh, need to remember where we're headed. You know, uh, we're headed to heaven. And I think sometimes, even in suffering, uh, it's not always easy to r remember we're going to heaven. Um, you know, in our problems, we can just get so emotional about it. And I think we do have to practice those basic coping skills. And, um, you know, I especially, you know, marriage is a great uh, topic to kind of draw some resources with that, you know, in our marriage, 
you know, there are times where we do have to address a problem with our spouse. You know, we shouldn't just uh, try to tough it out. And, you know, I think that there are times where, hey, you need to lovingly express to them, you know, what the problem is. But at the same time, you know, there are other situations where you have to, you know, trust God. You have to uh, pray about the situation and you have to um, also uh, push through the day and, uh, you know, have a good attitude. And so I think when we're talking about all types of suffering, I think we can really draw the uh, tips from, you know, some of those basic uh, uh, solutions in marriage. And so, um, you know, today's po- podcast is not going to be on any particular subject. I think I just wanted to maybe just uh, stick with kind of an encouraging message you know, also share a little bit of my journey. Um, you know, uh, when we look at the life of Jesus, uh, we see someone who has a purpose for his life. You know, he created the world and he also created it to be inhabited. You know, he created and is creating a family for himself. And then he also had a purpose, you know, that he was going to die for the sins of the world. And, you know, I think realizing that, you know, one, we we were headed for destruction. I don't think we uh, fully understand, you know, maybe why or, you know, how is it fair or all of that. And I don't think I will get into that in this podcast, but. Um, Jesus was determined to live life for God. And I think we have to remember to do that as um, instead of, you know, pursuing all these other things that I think can what the Bible describes as choking the word, you know, making it unfruitful where, you know, you don't necessarily uh you know, want to uh, live life for God when you are pursuing all these other things. And so um, remembering that Jesus lived life for us as an example to really show us, you know, how life should be lived. Yeah, you know, Jesus had times where he sat down and to eat or you know he went to a wedding and made uh you know uh water into wine um and he also did many good things you know even the book of john the gospel of john tells us that jesus did many things that weren't even recorded in any of the gospels uh that you know that just makes our makes us wonder even though we get a taste of you know uh, what it uh, probably uh, was like, but still, uh, Jesus lived his life for God, and he lived life with the purpose of you know he's one king of the world, king of uh, every believer, and even non-believers, he's still their king, even though they're under that wrath of God. You know, Jesus uh, showed us the way. He said he is the way, the truth, and the life. I think sometimes we can get upset because, you know, we want to be our own way. You know, we want to do things our own way. And I don't think God is necessarily stopping us from our little pursuits of, you know, maybe you want to play tennis on the weekend. You know, maybe you want to... uh, uh, drive to the big city. Uh, maybe you want to, you know, uh, take a spaceship into space or walk on the moon or go to college. You know, I don't think Jesus is stopping us from doing that, but he wants us to be 
sanctified. He wants us to be holy. He wants us to be righteous while walking on the moon, while going to college, while looking to get married, while, you know, playing with your kids. You know, he wants you to be in right relationship with him and really build that foundation for, uh, you know, all the other things that life is going to uh, be like, you know, when you think about it, we're only at the beginning of our eternity. You know, God has lived for an eternity and he still has an eternity more to live. But yet, you know, we see that life has changed. You know, God, you know, we're not told that, you know, God had people or even angels before, you know, we we still wonder what god's eternity past has looked like but yet we know it there has been change and that you know we haven't existed before and so if god does all of this that he is doing you know in this part of eternity of his existence you know there's so many more big things that i think we can at least expect god to do in eternity future but we still have to have that foundation of loving, loving people. We can't be going around killing people or, uh, you know, uh, having being sexually immoral or, uh, you know, lying or stealing. You know, that's not a society that God wants to have for all of eternity. And so um, remembering where we're headed to. I think can help us, you know, uh, and of course, like I've already mentioned, praying about our suffering, you know, that's the same thing the book of James talked about is, you know, pray when you're going through suffering. And then I think one of the things that I don't always mention is praising God. You know, the book of James mentions that we should praise God when we're happy and we have to give God the glory. We have to give him the praise because of who he is. You know, God is not a man, you know, uh, and he's not like us. Even though he created us, he's saying, you know, I think when he says he's not a man, meaning that, you know, even though we're made in his image, you know, he is not like us, you know, even though... um you know, when God appeared to Moses, he had a back. At least he's, Moses saw uh, God's back. But I think, you know, that was just one form of God. Jesus, Jesus himself said, uh, we have not seen God's form. Uh, and so there's a lot to really unravel with God that I think we're still going to have questions uh, as we get into old age, you may already be in old age listening to this, but, um, you know, we're going to have questions about God that I believe, uh, you know, God's going to have answers to. And so um, I think when we look at our life, we have to live for God and uh, realize and exercise our faith that he's going to bring us through our problems. Now, it may not necessarily be in your timing. You know, I know I went through something, you know, uh, that, you know, it was a, a, almost about a year until I actually saw that breakthrough. I do remember, you know, kind of towards the end of the year, I think I had a little bit more faith you know, uh, but, uh, uh, and I mean, I, I think I saw more evidence of, uh, God's work, but still some things take, you know, time and then other things, it may not necessarily take a whole bunch of time. You know, uh, I know when I wanted a car, um, it took some time for me to buy my car. Now, I had a car, but once before, 
but I think you know uh, amongst all the different memories I think one of the memories is that the car you know eventually stopped working and you know I was uh, you know borrowing my parents car you know and so anyway some things take a while and so uh we can still though expect god to give us answers uh you know the prophets talk about how you know they can bring up criticisms about how sometimes the way we are living is not necessarily uh in god's will you know the prophets teach us you know hey you need to turn from evil and you know do good you know uh jeremiah was telling them you know hey you guys need to repent and you know you need to do what god is asking you to do but so many times because people are evil and we're built with this you know after the fall at least, you know, we're built with this, you know, enmity between us and God. And so we don't always want to listen to what God has to say. You know, I know I was like that. You know, I think for a little bit, I was sort of, you know, following a path of God. But then there was a time in my life where, you know, I didn't really uh, follow God, you know, I was, uh, you know, seeing how I can get what I want, you know, and then I realized that how empty this world is without Jesus Christ, that, you know, sometimes I like to think of Earth as all the other planets out there in the universe, that Earth is just as empty as all those other planets out in the universe we just don't notice it all the time and i think god made it that way for us to find jesus christ and so um you know even though earth has beauty and you know has uh you know a habitable uh space to live in yet still I believe sometimes we can feel so empty and so uh, barren like the moon or like Mars or like Saturn. And so um, we're meant to find Jesus Christ and he's going to make a new heavens and a new earth where, you know, righteousness dwells. And so... um, You know, if you're looking for money, hey, look for God. You know, heaven is going to be made out of money. You know, the streets are paved with gold. You know, but before you get that gold streets to live on, God is asking you to do something. He's asking you to put your faith in Jesus Christ. You know, if you're looking for a relationship, a close friendship, you know, someone to uh, be as close as family to you, as close as a mom and dad, you know, look for God, you know, that's someone who's saying that he will never leave you or forsake you. And in heaven, we're going to be one big family. Um, And that's something that we have to remember, you know, uh, if we're looking for material possessions, you know, those are going to be in heaven. And I think God can give us a little bit of heaven here on earth. But still, you know, we have to look for God. Jesus said it plainly that, you know, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. You know, I don't think God is against things. You know, I don't think God is against us living in a big city or, you know, uh, building a tall tower, you know, I don't think God was against the Tower of Babel, you know, necessarily, but it was really the heart of people, the sin in people 
that God did not like the sinfulness of people. And sometimes we want our cake and eat it too. And we have to realize that, you know, the truth of the matter is that is not reality. No matter how much we want to push our own reality into life, there is a bigger reality that takes precedence over what we want to do. You know, it takes precedence over what we make our life out to be. And so, um, anyway, um, thanks so much for checking out this podcast. You know, hopefully this was helpful to someone, um, I think that, um, you know, we all have to uh, go through different challenges. You know, the Bible talks about suffering. But hey, remember that, you know, people suffer even outside of Jesus Christ. People go through challenges without outside of Jesus Christ. So choosing to reject Jesus is not going to um, make problems go away you know only that submit submission to god eventually our problems will fade and so um hey you can also visit my website washi.com w-a-s-h-y-e.com thanks so much and i will talk to you on the next one see ya